Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we're back on with the uh, little 12 inch RGB Mac monitor uh, repair and as you can see, miracle of miracles, I actually did manage to get the um, <coughs> the board off the um, back of the neck um, it was basically it was stuck on with some of that um, silicon you like um, adhesive that they use in these things, it's blobbed all over the place and some of that had basically stuck on here and was preventing it coming off and I managed to uh, cut through it with a knife like that and ease it off and I'd, I've managed to get it off intact without doing any damage so uh, that makes working on this thing a lot easier we can actually get in here and clean here better um, I think what I, what we're going to do is we're going to definitely change that 220 well, <coughs> excuse me sorry we're definitely going to take them off and test them I do have a um, another 220 you have here a good one that I know I've tested uh, we can replace it if it does turn out to be faulty um, problem is that um, 82 UF there at 160 volts. Uh, if we, had, we do actually need one of them, I will have to order one because I have checked everywhere and I definitely don't have one of them in stock. Closest I've got is that, which is a um, 100 UF at 400 volts. So at a pinch, we could at least try and fit that and see whether it makes the um, situation better. But um, I would obviously have to order the correct part. Um, eventually anyway but I think what we'll do now is we'll um, we'll get them two caps out of there and we will um, give the board a bit of a clean up on this side round there um, I've already given the other side of the board a really good clean now so um, it's quite clean where the electrolyte is actually spilt um, so I think we'll get on with that now so let's just uh, flip this board over it just makes working it so much better now knowing you're not stuck with the um, CRT <laughs> Attaching it does also mean we can um, get this thing back in the case a little bit easier as well, hopefully. Now, get the solder sucker out because I've just jammed this one up. I'll have to un unblock that one later on. Fortunately, I always, um, I always have a couple. Alright, so let's have a look which is the first capacitor we're going to take out, which is going to be the 220 UF, which is uh, them two connections there. So we'll get a bit of solder and we'll wet it up with a bit of fresh solder. And I can still smell that um, electrolyte even though I've really cleaned the board down very well. Oh, I'm putting that away for I need that now. Once we've got this component out, we might even have another quick clean up. Get that one out. And that should be clean. Let's give that a rock, see if that's going to come out. I think electrically it's free, it's just stuck with that bloody gluey stuff again. As you can see, they've, uh, they've actually stuck the two. Um, they've actually stuck the two capacitors together with it. So let's uh, let's cut down that. And hopefully, wow, it is sticky stuff. This. I'm gonna go too mad. I'm just cutting into something. There we go. Out you come. I think that's been leaking as well. By um, you can see that on the bottom of there. Either that or it's just uh, electrolyte that's leaked out of the other one. But uh, let's get the capacitance tester out and we'll see what that's, uh, that's saying. Yeah, I'm not doing my cheap crappy Chinese one. Um, I need to get my peak atlas repaired. I managed to break the leads off it again. Right, okay, let's see what this is going to make of this capacitor. Down in capacitance quite a lot. It um, should be a 2,200 2, and it's um, showing up as a 1,900. So I don't think that's um, happy no matter what. And we've got a, uh, a nice replacement for it here. What we will do, I think at the same time we'll take this capacitor out um, so we can clean around that piece of the board a little bit easier. 
So that's uh, this capacitor here. straight out and we've already cut the uh, cut the loop from around it yeah now that one if you look underneath that one that's bone dry hopefully this one might be okay might be able to put this one straight back in let's um, test it on the capacitance meter so this should be uh, 82 UF and it's 160 volts Seventy six point one, so it's a little bit low. I think that should be okay. That one, though, let's see what the hundred UF I've got some um, showing up as. Eighty one point eight nine. So I mean that's quite close, although we would have to modify the board to get it to fit because it's a completely different pin spacing. I think what we'll probably do is just stick that one back in for now. We'll certainly change that um, 2200 UF there because that was definitely been leaking as well, this one's a good one. But that doesn't seem to have though it's been leaking any at all, so I think that will have to go again at least for the time being. Uh, what we will do though is we'll have a good clean round the um, clean round the board here. Just get rid of any of the uh, leaked electrolyte that we can that's obviously still on the um, top side of the board. bad now we've got rid of most of it so we'll stick them um, I'll say we'll stick that one back in and we'll um, use that as the replacement for the uh, a replacement for the one uh, which has obviously been leaking we'll just have to clean the legs up on that a little bit that should be okay this crap off here. Cut into the label there a little bit but that's better. Oops. Let's stick that one goes in that way. Unfortunately, negatives marked on the board. That goes back in like that. That's, uh, I think that one will hold in, but this one I think I'll have to hold it with my finger before I uh, get it over. Just bend the legs out a little bit, that should hold it. That holds it well enough while we solder it. One. 
that's two. I've got these two to do. That's one. I'm just going to have another little swab around there. I can still smell that electrolyte when I was um, when I was putting that in there. So what can we use? Got, oh, that one's not not very used. It'll do for the bottom here. see that last little bit of electrolyte coming off just a few places where I've missed before you do have to sometimes go over these boards a few times just to uh, make sure you've got it all off and it's really really spread on this board it's all over the place and I don't think it's from any of the other caps we are just going to do a quick smell test on the top of the board once we've done this but that actually could be flux you know, that could possibly flux up there, but that's uh, that's all the muck and grime that's come off. Right now, let's go for a final smell test on this bottom board. You know, that's how scientific I am when I'm repairing these things. Let's go for a smell test. Lots the new capacitors all in there. I'm happy with them. I've already had a smell test around this part of the board. Let's have a go around here. Very unmistakable smell when capacitors um, start le leaking electrolyte, so you can't really um, mistake it for anything else. No, nope. I'm not actually really suspecting these little ones. It's usually the bigger um, electro electrolytics like them that cause problems. That's why I was checking around them ones as well, but they seem absolutely fine. These ones that are like only 50 volts are um, below, and they're only sm um, small values don't really seem to uh, have the same uh, same problems nope I can't smell anything on there that's um, like that one's that one's just in uh, line with the um, line output transform nope no nope. I can't smell anything on there that's um, definitely uh, smelling suspect so let's take it turn our attention to uh, oops the neck board here now there's only one that I'm really concerned about and that's this one in here which is um, 220 UF at 100 volts I don't smell anything No, I don't smell anything, and usually, like I said, all you need to do is warm it up for a second and um, you can smell the um, the nasty electrolytes. So I think, unless there's anything else um, wrong with it, I think we may have, um, we've at least sorted the capacitor issues out. Whether there's any other additional issues, we're not going to know yet, but uh, we're not going to find that out with it like this on the bench. We can only find that out when we actually put it back together, at least put it back together enough that we can actually apply power to it and um, test it. I mean, we should be able to see whether there's an improvement just from the initial raster on it because you could see how uh, horribly distorted that was in the other um, video so uh, I will be back very shortly when I've um, got some of the uh, got the tube back on the ch on the um, bench here and we'll start putting this thing um, back together so join me in a sec okay you've joined me back and um, as you can see I've just slid the uh, I've got the, sh the CRT and the case back up on the bench 
and I've slid the uh, main board back down into its position and it was really nice and easy, unlike where um, when I was taking it apart we had to struggle to manhandle the board out, it literally just slotted in its slots and I'm just about to put these two top screws in just to hold it in position while we work on the rest of it because that should make things a lot more uh, a lot more stable and a lot easier to work on so let's just uh, stick these screws in The biggest, this is basically now a giant jigsaw puzzle. We've got to figure out where all these connections that we've disconnected um, actually go. Now I remember that one definitely goes down there because I think that's the um, that's the degaussing coil for the CRT because I think that's the oh, that's the degausser there. And that's the degaussing line that goes around the um, CRT. Now. One of these, one of these screws, I think, to there. Or was it the one off that that screwed to there, and that one screws to there? I think that one screws to there. Which is what I mean about um, a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. There's lots of things that look like they can go in more than one place. about right. That goes in there like that. Let's uh, turn it round and we'll get that screwing up there. Take you up a little bit like you see. Right, that screw goes in there and that should be the main board locked into the chassis then. Okay. So let's look at reconnecting the um, the backboard here now. Now we do need to reconnect that wire. That plugs on there. Like that. And we've got these two bottom wires. I think these will be easier to connect while we've got it um, down here like this. So that goes on there like that. That one goes on there, like that, and now I think we should be ready to uh, reseat the board back down where it should live. Now that one, I think that, hang on a minute, I'll put that in on the wrong side of that cable there, that should go through there. Right now, hopefully, oops, this should sit back down. There we go, that actually fitted in really nicely. And that slotted in where it was meant to slot in. Now, this, ah. Uh, I should have put this connection on here on before I um, put that in there because it's right up under there. But it'll actually be easier just to slot that back off while I uh, put that connection in. That's not on. And this one was a real pain in the backside to get off. It's a really, really tight connector. In fact, let me just see if I can uh, squash that little bit there down. Right, let's give it another go. That's better. Oh great, the middle bit of it's broken out now. Let's, uh, let's see if we can just cramp that shut, get a bit of a better uh, better connection on it. All right, let's try that again. It's always one that's going to be in a fiddly faffy place that's going to cause you problems.
there we go that's better that's that's on this time there we go that's slotted in position that's all them wires on the bottom yep and that goes in there that connects that there like that that one's in that one's in and the next one over is in yes that one needs to just come around there a little bit right that looks so far so good now this wire here connects in up there like that Oop, excuse me I've got a little clip here which I dropped and that clip goes around that wire there goes through there and screws that down there I think we have the screw for it here we do and that screws that screws that down like that now this little wire here so I was right that wire going up to that top piece here because the other wire is this one oops you get where you should go okay I think we're getting very close now. Now we've got the scan coils to reconnect, which is that one there. We've also got the shielding to go onto the um, sign of the line output transformer. So let's tip the screen back over. Let's tip you down so you can see what's happening here. So we've got to reconnect the um, scan coils there. Unfortunately, they will only go on in one direction. So we can just move that out of the way for now. Now these are a pain to get off, I hope they're not going to be as much of a pain to get back on. That's in position. Let's try and use this screwdriver just to help ease them down. Okay, there we go. Now they are down. That is down where it should go. Let's put this um, the shielding back on the uh, line output transformer. two more skew, screws to hold that down to the plastic chassis okay now we've got this wire that comes from the LED at the front to the monitor which we just need to feed back through there and that just plugs in down there there we go and finally we've got the um, anode cap here which we need to um, just re reunite with its uh, connection on the CRT there and we should just be able to just push this in There we go. 
Let's have a quick check. Check behind there. Yeah, that's nicely seated in there. I don't know if you can see that on the... Uh, I don't think you can really see that. Let me see how I can zoom in. You can see in there, that's... Uh, that's nicely at home, it's snug, that's not going to pull out, it's actually connected into its connector. Right. So as far as I'm aware, that is it all back together. Now, I would, I must admit, I would normally switch it on just like this to test it, but I think I'm actually going to put the, uh, in this instance, I'm going to actually going to put the um, cover back on before I actually switch it on. If I can find it, there it is. Oops, oops. Try not to pull it off the desk at this late, late stage. Now we've got the two long white screws. sure it's switched off. We'll give it some power. I'm not going to plug it into the computer yet, we're just going to see whether it's made any um, improvement initially when we power it up. Or whether we've got the same fake the same waviness um, on screen. So uh, hopefully you can see that. So switch on. bend there but that does at least seem somewhat better let's just see what it does when we actually um, connect it up to a uh, up to the apple but that did look like we've got an improvement I can't say it's cured yet but I said we certainly look like we've got an improvement there right now Get the old um, get the old LC in. Put that down there. Connect that up. Right. Need an extra IC leak. That's there. off until we're ready. We'll get a keyboard and mouse just in case. So I don't know whether it is going to actually power up um, or not but plug that in. We'll set that back a little bit. Hopefully you can see that okay. Right let's uh, let's give it a whirl. We'll switch the monitor on. We'll switch the Mac on. We'll see if we get anything on screen. Nope. I think we still have other further issues to um to deal with with this monitor but we have certainly uh, made an improvement I can actually hear the, um, the hard drive in the Mac there chattering away I 
interesting how the um, contrast and brightness controls don't seem to make any effect whatsoever. So I'm going to have to um, I'm going to have to look further into this. It's obviously not just a simple um, capacitor issue in this monitor. It does definitely have further further issues, as you can see. So anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, uh, well we've seen that um, just changing a few caps um, isn't the uh, simple easy solution that I thought it was going to be with this monitor. We're certainly going to have to do um, extra work to it um, as well. So. Um, there's definitely going to be a part three to this, so I'm going to say I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, hope you enjoyed that, so thanks for watching and goodbye.